a young gunslinger and Alex Drake leads the Omaha Heart versus veteran quarterback Morgan Spencer and the Pittsburgh Rebellion. Next on LFL Football Night. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better knock the f get out of it. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your foot on their throat. LFL football night has arrived to downtown Omaha. Welcome inside the booth of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza joining you alongside Bobby Huco. And Bobby, we've got the Eastern Conference debut of this young 2017 season. The Omaha Heart hosting the Pittsburgh Rebellion, a pair of teams that really don't have an identity at this point. No, you're right. Last year, Omaha did not perform very well on the field. During the offseason, no, I like they went out. They rehired their former coach, the most successful coach they ever had, Dante Allen. And then he went out and re-signed some veterans. Lindsey Burris, the Wolverine, Jacqueline Good, two solid players. And my favorite move, he goes to New England, brings in the top free agent quarterback, Alex Drake. I like this new look Omaha team. They're going to really need to rely on some of those returners to go back to their inaugural season, which is the only time this franchise has had any success. And speaking of Omaha, in 2012 at this very same arena, folks, they upset at that point the number one ranked Jacksonville Breeze. You fast forward to tonight, a very different team in the Pittsburgh Rebellion. It's an expansion team. We don't know a lot about them. There's no game film. If you look up and down their roster, you're not going to recognize any names. So I ask you, Bobby Huco, if you're the coaching staff of this Omaha Heart team, how do you prepare for the unknown? Well, you can't. You have to have your team ready to go. You're right. The coach, Joe DeBerry from Pittsburgh, nobody knows about. The players, nobody knows about. But Coach DeBerry, he was smart. He signed a couple free agents. He brought in Remy Olenzak. We know her from Cleveland. Slot receiver, cornerback, solid player. A great leader in the locker room and on the field. So keep that team together. And then he goes to Baltimore. The quarterback we know, Morgan Spencer, not a superstar, but really stable, consistent. She'll help this team out a lot. I think they're going to need some of that foundation that veteran players can give you. It's a luxury a lot of expansion teams don't have to have a Morgan Spencer and a Remy Olenzak. Again, they're going to need that to play in a place like the Ralston Arena, one of the toughest places in all of the LFL. For a closer look at this building and this fan base, we go down to the field to the third member of our broadcast team, Ms. Brenna Black. Omaha may be known for its stake, but football comes in a close second. Despite suffering a two-season losing streak, these fans still remain loyal, and boy, do they get loud in here. In this intimate stadium, the fans feel like they're right on top of the action. But the story we're about to see unfold is how Pittsburgh's gonna play in this kind of environment tonight with all these loyal and loud fans out here, especially their quarterback, Morgan Spencer, who's been off for a year. Back to you guys. Thanks, Brenna. It's time to lace them up. It's the Pittsburgh Rebellion battling the hometown Omaha Heart. Kickoff is next. Back to the Ralston Arena. An amazing crowd here in Omaha tonight. First, we go down to the field with Brenna Black. Thanks, guys. For kickoff, I am here with Omaha's newly signed quarterback, Alex Drake. Alex, how are the nerves right now? Is it excitement or is it all nerves? I think it's a little bit of both. I think I'm really, really excited to be on the field tonight. But at the same time, I'm really nervous. Uh, I have a lot to prove. I've been working really hard this offseason, and I just have to execute tonight. Alex Drake, last year I thought she was one of the top young guns in the LFL. She says she's nervous, but every star player gets those butterflies before a game. She's rock solid, the biggest acquisition for Omaha during the offseason. That is Kayla Wegman of the Omaha Heart. Nice, high, deep, end of round kick. That is fielded by Sonia Osselborn. And Osselborn getting to the left side and all the way out to midfield. That is the stud running back that we are gonna see a lot of tonight. That is where Pittsburgh will take over, all the way at the Omaha 24. 
Before the game, when I spoke to head coach Joe DeBerry, he said Osselborn will be a star player in the LFL. She showed it on that kickoff. I'm anxious to see her play running back. And that is the other story on your screen. Morgan Spencer, the free agent quarterback from Baltimore, signing with Pittsburgh. Now under center for a first and 10 play. Great field position for Pittsburgh. That is Jolie Efezekai. And that is a six yard inside handoff as we now meet the starters for Pittsburgh. Jolie Efezekai, wide receiver. Jacqueline Trejo, Ginger Kuchba, tight end. Tracy Wilmer, center. Sonia Osborne, running back. Morgan Spencer, your quarterback. The key tonight for this offense is gonna be the veteran quarterback, Morgan Spencer. She has to hold this team together and get some points on the board. Again, great field position for Pittsburgh. And that is a handoff to Sonia Osselborn. Nothing doing. That is the Wolverine. Jacqueline Good signing, or I should say re-signing, with the Omaha Heart and making an impact early. Head coach Dante Allen made two great signings, bringing them back. The veterans that were with Omaha before, the Wolverine, she's all over the field, and don't forget Lindsey Burke. A third and five after a yard loss on the previous carry. Ball at the Omaha 19-yard line, and a little bit of miscommunication. That is Sarah Jane Thompson meeting Sonia Osselborn. A loss of five yards, Pittsburgh going backwards. A lot of miscommunication in that Pittsburgh offense. Spencer, the quarterback, thought it was going to be a straight dive play. Osselborn went outside for a pitch play. A big play by Sarah Thompson, but Pittsburgh looking really rusty right now, Mitch. A fourth and 10 after this offense was set up on the 24 of Omaha with a first and 10. Not exactly the start this offense wanted. Spencer now under center, dropping back, rolling right. Looking to the end zone and overshooting Quaylin Pitts. They had a twin set to the right. They had Pitts on the inside. She ran a wheel route. For some reason, she stopped running. Morgan Spencer laid it out there. She wasn't there because she stopped running. That's not the quarterback's fault. They need to get on the same page. That is lack of practice right there. Even if Fezekai running the post pattern was open, both receivers got behind coverage, but Pitts for some reason stopped running toward the ball. I think really the reason there, Bobby, is Morgan Spencer was signed so late in the offseason. She just has not had the reps with this offense. On the other side of the ball, that is Alex Drake coming off an impressive rookie season with New England and now signed with Omaha. That is the first play from scrimmage. That is Nikki Bernhardt. And look at the power of Bernhardt. That is a seven yard carry. I love the way Bernhardt, she keeps her knees above traffic. She had absolutely no reason to get any yardage there. The corner was clear coming in the backfield. She just kept her knees high, broke one tackle and got positive yardage for Omaha. That seven yard run setting up a second and three. Ball all the way down to the Pittsburgh 19 yard line. Drake under center again to Bernhardt. Bernhardt cutting across the field. Had a lot of open grass ahead of her. And that is a 14 yard carry. The amazing thing, Nikki Bernhardt, that was all her two plays in a row. Not much blocking, it's her breaking tackles. 21 yards on two plays. Setting up a first and goal. So Nikki Bernhardt living up to all the hype in the offseason. Coming into the season, she was one of the running backs everybody had on their radar. She looks great so far. They have a lot of beef up front. They're doing okay blocking. They're not even going to the passing game. Look at Alex Drake. That was a first and goal carry. Watch the impact here. She just lowered her head, tried to bow right through that defense. That tells you what kind of athlete. She is not going to hold back running the ball or throwing the ball. Omaha taking the ball right to Pittsburgh right now. Now let's meet the starters for Omaha. Raina Holivar, running back. Jimmy Lundberg, wide receiver. Danielle Snyder, tight end. Sarah Jane Thompson, your tight end. Sarah Robinson, your center. 
Nikki Bernhardt, running back. How great. There is absolutely no question the key to this Omaha offense is quarterback Alex Drake. She is new to this team, new to Omaha, but she is to take control. And that is Alex Drake barreling her way into the end zone. This is just a bull rush right up the middle. Everybody's set up to bring her down. She goes right through for one yard. What an opening series for Alex Drake. Her first series in Omaha, she takes him in for six. Not through the air, but on the ground with Nikki Bernhardt and Alex Drake. I think beggars can't be choosers at this point. If you're the Omaha Heart and you can get points on the board, go for it. 100% right. Dante Allen, he didn't want anything to do with that passing game because he didn't need it on that first drive. That is the extra point attempt. Ball is loose on the ground. And that's recovered, but the extra point attempt, no good. Our score will remain six to nothing with Omaha drawing blood early. A four play 26 yard drive as we bring you back to LFL football night. An impressive start for Omaha. That is a first down handoff going nowhere. Open field tackle by Jackie, the Wolverine, good. Nobody touched the Wolverine on that when she came through Scott free There was nowhere to go for Sonya Offelborn. A second and 11 ball at the 14. Spencer remains under center, dropping back. Again under heavy pressure, falling incomplete as we meet the starters for Omaha. Macy and Sarah, corner. Raina Holabar, corner. Sarah Jane Thompson, strong safety. Shalyn Durham, free safety. Jacqueline Good, linebacker. Danielle Schneider, defensive end. Lindsey Burst, defensive end. I know it's early in the game, but that de defensive front line of Burst, Schneider, and Good is absolutely destroying the offensive line of Pittsburgh. Ball still at the 14-yard line. Spencer trying to buy some time and throwing into the flat. That is intercepted. Shalyn Durham, really the heartbeat of this defense coming through. Absolutely no blocking by the offensive line of Pittsburgh. Morgan Spencer has nowhere to go, and she just throws it up. Not a good decision by Spencer, but an offensive line, they need to shore things up. That is an Ole offensive line if I've ever seen one. They didn't touch a single defender. That was three lookout blocks. No blocking at all. Morgan Spencer should be all over him right now on the sideline. A first and 10 for Omaha set up beautifully. All the way down to the Pittsburgh 21 yard line. Now Drake observing the defense in the shotgun. Looking down the field, has a receiver. And what a play for the Pittsburgh free safety, Jolie Epizakai, coming over. Epizakai, I'll tell you, it's a great play, but I really like the call. Super play, don't get me wrong. But I love Dante Allen right after that change of possession, going deep. Alex Drake threw a perfect ball to Lindsey Howell. Just a great play by Epizakai. A completely different approach for Omaha. They kept it on the ground in their first series. Now going to the ground, Alex Drake, a design keeper. Number 16 will pick up 11 yards on that carry. Drake has this defense on their heels. Let's meet their starters. Jessica Johnson, corner. Rami Allenzak, corner. Kenya McKeown, strong safety. Jolie Fezekai. Free safety. Tanya Osborne, middle linebacker. Gina Campisi, defensive end. Jacqueline Trejo, defensive end. It's really interesting that a Fezekai is a starting free safety at 6'1, 165. You'd think she'd be up playing linebacker. A first and goal pass to Lindsey Howell. Well overshot. That is one of the criticisms of Alex Drake. Her accuracy is not one of the best in the league. Well, we always say you got to throw with your feet. She was not set. You have your feet, good quarterbacks throw with their feet, and that was all her setup. Alex Drake is a great athlete. She can throw the football, but you have to work on her footwork more. A second and goal ball at the 10 of Pittsburgh. 
This looks like they're going back to the ground and back to their workhorse. That is Nikki Bernhardt. That'll be a gain of two yards. Great open field tackle by Kenya McKeon. That was a great tackle by McKeon, but that run, I'm telling you, that's a great run. It only gained two yards, but Nikki Bernhardt did a one hop, one cut, jump cut to not be stopped for a three yard loss. Third and goal, Bernhardt remains in the backfield. Drake under center going back to Bernhardt, losing the ball. And that is a loose football. Bernhardt making no effort to recover her own fumble. As much as we were saying what a great night she's having, that is absolutely ridiculous. She fumbles the football. She's mad because she probably could have run in the end zone, but you got to recover the ball. Hey, come here. When that ball hits the ground, I don't want to see you put your hands in your head again. Go for that fucking ball next time. That's head coach Dante Allen echoing our sentiment. If you lose the ball, you got to make some effort for the recovery. That's a rookie mistake because you're so upset you fumbled the football. You see the goal line. You could have walked in the end zone, but you have to get the ball. Now Pittsburgh How about has this? It. You're the Pittsburgh Rebellion. You've pretty much had the worst start that you can imagine, and you're only down six to nothing. Morgan Spencer right now has to make something happen, something big time happen. You're right, it could have been a two touchdown lead by Omaha. Now they have a chance to tie it. Pittsburgh trying to stretch the field. That looked like complete miscommunication between Morgan Spencer and Quaylen Pitts, the wide receiver. Pitts was actually open, but right now that offensive line for Pittsburgh is not giving any protection to Morgan Spencer. And it looks like she needs a clean pocket to deliver a good football. When she gets pressure, she throws like that, almost intercepted. That's the perfect point, Bobby. You know better than I, being a former quarterback at the highest level, she doesn't have all the physical abilities, so you've got to give her an opportunity in the pocket. At 100% right. That offensive line is doing nothing for her right now. A second and 10 handoff. Look at that swarming Omaha Hart defense led by Danielle Snyder and Jackie Good, the Wolverine. On that point about the offensive line, right now the coaching staff of Pittsburgh has got to know those three offensive linemen are not holding back the defensive front of Omaha. They need help. Keep it back in there. Put a receiver in there. Four on three. Three on three. They are getting destroyed right now. Give credit to the Omaha defensive coordinator, Kale Good. What a scheme he has developed on an attacking front six. And it looks like they're coming after the quarterback again. A third and eight, four-man rush. Getting to Spencer. Spencer finding a receiver. That is complete to Jacqueline Trejo. A gain of five yards. What about the effort from Morgan Spencer there just buying time? And that will take us to the end of the first 10 minutes of play. Omaha up six to nothing. Back to second quarter action here at Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco and our sideline reporter, Brenna Black. Right now, Pittsburgh, they need to come up with anything, anything on offense. They haven't done anything in passing game, a little bit in a rushing game, but they have to develop something quick. A fourth and three down the field. That pass complete to Jessica Johnson. A gain of two, that will not be enough as Pittsburgh once again turns the ball over on downs. Again, Morgan Spencer coming up with a great play even to get that ball off. She had that whole defensive line in her face. She completed the pass. Johnson could got, not get the extra yard for the first down. And here we go again, Omaha in the red zone going in. Yeah, the field position in this game is absolutely slated to Omaha's advantage. Right now, they should be up two scores. That fumble is going to come back and haunt them. I hope it doesn't, but you never know. A bunch set reverse handoff. Jamie Lundberg. Lundberg gaining five yards. Jessica Johnson on the tackle. Again, you have to hand it to Dante Allen. This looks like a completely different Omaha team that we saw the entire year last year. 
This Omaha franchise, we spoke to them earlier in the week, and each of them had the right mindset in terms of forgetting what's happened here the last two years and building a new identity starting tonight. They have a lot of the same players from last year. They just have a completely different attitude. That is another design keeper by Drake. Gaining two yards, moving the ball down inside the seven yard line. I'm not real sure about that call as much as we just pumped up Dante Allen. Alex Drake, a regular quarterback sneak going nowhere. And you have Bernhardt tearing his place apart. Give her the football. A third and three. After that, Alex Drake, two-yard keeper. That is an inside handoff. Reina Holaber. Holaber will gain two yards. Omaha, very contentious, keeping it on the ground. Holabar's a good back. Bernhardt's a good back. But going back to your point of two plays ago, why give the ball to Alex Drake, your quarterback? The two things Dante Allen doesn't want to lose are his wallet and his starting quarterbacks. Fourth and one, ball at the Pittsburgh five-yard line. Drake under center, handing it off to Nikki Bernhardt. Look at the open field tackle by Tracy Wilmer. Tracy Wilmer broke through the block of the offensive guard. Wow, what a play by Tracy Wilmer. The ball's going back to Pittsburgh. You want to talk about opportunities for Omaha to blow this game wide open. That is the second red zone opportunity that they have blown going back to Nikki Bernhardt's fumble, and then a fourth and one open field, and you can't convert. You can't convert, and that offensive line's been playing great for Omaha, and then Tracy Wilbur comes up with a play like that. They have talent. They just gotta put it all together somehow. We will see if Morgan Spencer and company can keep pace. They have really struggled through the first 10 minutes of football, and now heading here into the second quarter. Ball at about the eight yard line. Spencer under center, dropping back and rolling right, looking down the field, not shy, all the way down again. That was intended for Jessica Johnson, and it looks like it drew the laundry. Where has that been the whole game? All kinds of protection for Morgan Spencer. She had an under thrower. That's where That's the penalty came. Defense. Number 17, 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That is the break this Pittsburgh team needed. That'll set up a first and 10, a 10 yard penalty. I'm not sure they call pass interference. I'm sorry, they called pass interference. They didn't give it a spot foul. So it was, it's 10 yards versus them getting the full length of the field over. 10 yards, you're right. But if somehow Morgan Spencer could have delivered a little bit more oomph on that ball, Jessica Johnson got behind the coverage. That could have been a huge play for Pittsburgh. First and 10, Morgan Spencer looking over that defense. Ball at the Pittsburgh 18 yard line. Sending Jessica Johnson in motion. That is illegal. You had two players in motion there. That is Rachel Manzo, no flag and a loss of three yards. Again, that is just a team not knowing their play. Both receivers came around on jet sweeps. You can't have two people in motion like that. That is indeed a penalty. Head referee Vince Hayes on the call. Two players moving at the same time. Five yards, replay first down. You know, we saw a little bit of this in week one with Austin and Seattle. I go back to my point of week one that there are no preseason games in the LFL, so there's really not an opportunity to weed out these mistakes until you get into the regular season. There's no question. And some of these players have never played this type of tackle football. Their eyes are like deer tonight. First time ever, there's going to be mistakes like that. First and 15 after that five-yard penalty handoff. Look at Rainer Holabur and that entire Omaha defense. This has got to be one of the better defensive efforts I have seen this early in the season of any of the previous LFL seasons. You brought up Kale Good's name before. He has this defense ready to play. He's had a practice in all offseason getting ready for tonight, and it shows they are on fire the entire defense. No gain on that previous carry. I am surprised there wasn't at least a loss. 
Omaha racking up four defenders in the box almost every play. There was a loss of pride, and that's about it on that play. Second and 15, Spencer down the field, no receiver there. That may have been intended for Jessica Johnson. Again, thrown on the run, not set. That was a bad pass by Morgan Spencer. She was open, just didn't get her the ball. She had time, too. Third and 15 as this Ralston Arena crowd comes to life. They are smelling blood in the water here with this Pittsburgh offense. And it looks like the Rebellion are uncertain and will call a timeout. Still trailing this one, six to nothing. Back to LFL football night here inside the Ralston Arena. A little house of pain, this defense is starting to catch fire. This crowd is fired up. It was never like this last year when they're getting blown away. Sometimes chaos brings a team together. Third and 15, Spencer just doing all she can to avoid the sack, setting up a fourth and 15. I think here's where you think about seriously punting the ball and at least playing the field position game. They haven't had the deep ball all night long. You're absolutely correct. Fourth and 15, but they're gonna go for it. I mean, Spencer's got the arm. She just needs some protection. I take that back. You cannot punt the ball unless you're on your own 10 yard line or deeper. So that's not an option here. Fourth and 15, Spencer buying time in the huddle. Complete to Jolie Efezekai. And Efezekai getting to the outside. That was a 12 yard pitch and catch. Not enough for a first down. There is not a question that Efezekai is their best and number one offensive record. She is 6'1", over 160 pounds. She can flat out play. They need to get her the ball more often any way they can. Apparently, Efezekai didn't get the memo. That was not enough for a first down. So Omaha once again taking over in prime field position. Efezekai did not get to the yard marker, but I'm going to tell you what. She has got unbelievable offensive weapon talent. Somehow they got to get her to ball a lot more, Mitch. She's got to be the tallest receiver in the league. A big target for Morgan Spencer. But again, falling short on that fourth, fourth down conversion. Her mistake on that, but the offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh has got to design plays to get her the football. First and 10, ball at midfield. That looked like they were faking the reverse. Now Drake keeping it. Alex Drake gaining six yards. Drake alongside Nikki Bernhardt just chewing up the ground yards in the first half. There was an absolutely ridiculous block by Lindsey Burst just destroying the outside linebacker for Pittsburgh. Drake followed that block and got big yardage. Now a second and four ball at the Pittsburgh 19. With all the success Omaha has had, they've got to be concerned that they're only up six to nothing. The handoff goes to Bernhardt. Bernhardt gaining five yards. That'll be enough for an Omaha first down. Bernhardt is such a great downhill runner. She knows how to get to that target hole. Bam, she's right through there. We have an in, somebody's down though. That looks to be Bernhardt slow getting up. Omaha can ill afford to lose number 18. Especially when you've got a quarterback like Alex Drake that needs a run game in order to be confident in the passing game. You're right, it's interesting. Without Bernhardt in the game, but she's nicked up. The passing game, we haven't seen much of it for Omaha. A couple deep throws, other than that, they, they're not trying to throw the ball at all. It's all run. First and 10 now for that Hart offense. And we'll see if they can add to the six points that they scored in the first quarter. Another bunch set. Drake under center, handing it off. That's Shalyn Durham. And Durham just walking into the end zone. Just the inside trap play. Basic football. Pittsburgh totally confused. I don't think she got touched as he walked in there. Wow, boom goes the dynamite. Omaha back on the board. 
Durham, known for her defensive skills at middle linebacker. Give credit to head coach Dante Allen, also serving as the offensive coordinator, to see her skill set in the run game. He has not seen his Pittsburgh defense, but he must have scouted him early here in the first half. He put that play in. The blocking was perfect because she went hands-free in the end zone. Great call by Dante Allen. That did not take long. Only a minute, two seconds, 25 yards on three plays. And that is the extra point attempt. That is good. Omaha finally extending its lead, 13 to nothing. That was a huge series for this Omaha offense. Right now, they're in totally control of this game. Pittsburgh is in disarray. The offense is doing nothing. I just hope somehow Joe DeBerry can get his team back in action, put some points on the board. I got to go back to my earlier point. The way Omaha has dominated this first half of play, it is just a travesty that they're only up 13 to nothing. They had two red zone opportunities in addition to this and they've come up short. For Pittsburgh, it gives them a chance, but for Omaha, comparing this team to last year, last year they were on the opposite end of this. They were getting destroyed and blown out by every team in the LFL, but tonight they are totally manhandling this entire Pittsburgh team. First and 10 once again at the 15 for Pittsburgh. Spencer handing it off. That is Sonia Osselborn. And that is what we expected of Osselborn when we talked to this Rebellion coaching staff. They said, look for number two. We're going to build our offense around it. They haven't gone to her. She is totally a difference maker. She has all kinds of skills, but they haven't given her the football like that. They finally gave her some blocking, and she came up big. That was a nine-yard gain by Osselborn. Finally, a bit of success with this Pittsburgh offense. Second and one now, ball at the 24. That is McKenna, no, that is Otzelborn in motion. A pitch play trying to get back to the right side. Great open field tackle, that was Sarah Jane Thompson. Really got a question this call. The previous play, they went right up the gut, good blocking. They come around on a jet sweep. You're not gonna be, you can't get outside of this Omaha defense. You don't have that team speed, and that's what happened. And Osselborn doesn't exactly strike me as anything but a north-south runner. She does not have the speed to get to the outside. 100%. She is north-south. Keep her between the tackles. There's no way she's going to get outside and turn the corner. Third and one. Ball remains at the 24. That is a handoff. Quaylen Pitts. Pitts will only gain three yards. Danielle Snyder on the stop. Pitts is a small back. She's really small, a scat back type. She looked like was very hesitant picking the hole. She got the first down, but very hesitant. Not sure I would not give the ball back to Alzeborn when you need that one yard. This should take us down to the two minute warning. A half that has seen Omaha absolutely dominate. They are up 13 to nothing. Back to second quarter action of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco and Brenna Black. Spencer under center, rolling right, trying to buy time. And that could be a loose ball. I'm not sure, are they calling this dead? It appeared that Morgan Spencer may have fumbled this football. That was a fumble. That was absolutely a fumble. Wow. wow. I'm going to echo your sentiments there, Bobby. That fooled me and our camera crew. You could see Spencer there just being shoved to the ground and losing it. Now, was her hand moving forward? And that's number one, Ariana Williams. Smart play by Williams. Everybody stopped. Everybody stopped. It's a touchdown. And how about Omaha rushing to get to the line so they can get the next playoff? They will not convert on the extra point, but they didn't even allow a challenge there. Why would not Joe DeBerry challenge that? That's crazy. I thought it was a fumble, but it was really close if their arm was moving forward. This might be the play of the game for Omaha. They are getting some points late in the second half here. 
Alex Drake very smartly going up to the line, rushing the extra point to ensure that there is no booth review. And that is another thing. Head referee Vince Hayes could have stepped in there and called a booth review. Absolutely. That was a crazy play, but it might be the turning point of this game. You mentioned Omaha before that play was only up two scores. Now it is a completely different ball game. If we had an opportunity to go back, and I'm sure we will, it'll be interesting to see if Morgan Spencer's arm was going forward or not. Now a first and 10, speaking of Spencer, in the pocket, finding Tracy Wilmer. Wilmer getting in the open field. Now cutting back to the inside. That was an 11-yard reception by Wilmer. Great play by Morgan Spencer, buying time in the pocket. Nobody open downfield, she just dumps it off underneath. But it's a shame, I mean, they gave up an easy touchdown. Maybe they can answer right now. A first and 10, Pittsburgh finally moving here. A rather odd looking pitch left to Oselborn. And we've got another penalty on this Pittsburgh offense. This will probably be holding. It looked bad. This offense does not look like it's clicking right there again. The, the back and the quarterback are not on the same page. Another call by head referee Vince Hayes. Run. Block in the back on the offense. Number 10. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. That call is on Jessica Johnson, a block in the back. First and 10 at the Omaha 10, so they're backed up. Spencer throwing down the field again, has a receiver. Efezekai. That is the lanky receiver we've been highlighting the entire first half. She is absolutely the most dangerous player in the game. She's totally double covered, but look how big she is. And all Morgan Spencer had to do is lay it up there for her. She came down with it and then ran away from everybody. What a comeback. What an answer by Pittsburgh. A 34 yard connection. And if a team ever needed a play, it was the Pittsburgh Rebellion. I do not know how this game is going to end, but confidence level for Spencer, this offense, for Everzecki, everybody, it's going to be sky high after watching plays like that. Now the extra point attempt, hand off to Rachel Manzo, and I'm not sure Manzo was even expecting that football. This offense shows brief glimpses of hope. <laughs> And then you see him just self-destruct. We're thinking the same thing. That last play was mo one of the most exciting plays I've seen in recent memory. And then the extra point looks like they fell asleep. I think this is an offense that just needs a little more time, a few more reps. You got to like their weapons, though. Osselborn, I think, can develop into a solid back. You're right. Jessica Johnson, we haven't talked about her. A solid receiving option. We'll see how that plays out in the second half. Efezakai could be a dominant player in this league. Just feed her the football like that, and she does the rest on her own. And Morgan Spencer, we talked about her before the game. She's not a super superstar, but she is an adequate LFL quarterback that can win. Now we will see if Alex Drake can operate a two-minute offense. Looking down the field as well. The receiver getting behind the defense. That pass was intended for Jamie Lundberg and going through her hands. Look at the touch by Drake. I love her throwing motion. I don't know how that ball wasn't caught. I love the call by Dante Allen coming right back with a bomb. Perfect pass. Her feet were under her hips like an athlete. She throws the bomb on the money. Just dropped. Wow. Second and 10 now after that Lundberg drop. Looks like we've got a ball down on the field. Did that come from the Pittsburgh bench? Are they just trying to slow this game down? There's a lot of gamesmanship here. I'm not <laughs> sure that was on purpose. Second and 10 play for Drake. That is a design roll to the right, getting to the outside, not getting out of bounds. I'm not sure why Drake did not go out of bounds. That was a gain of 12 yards. Drake is a beast. Reminds me a lot of Ashley Sonero in Los Angeles, who's back in the league. Most quarterbacks go down and run out of bounds. They attack the defense. Drake not getting out of bounds, or did she? The clock did stop. A first and 10 ball at the Pittsburgh 24-yard line. 
This game became a windshield wiper back and forth. Right now, this is fun football. This is a reverse to Marissa Riley Mitchell and completely smelled out by Gina Campisi and Sonia Oselborn. Gina Campisi, the top player to come out of Beaver Falls since Joe Namath. You could see a little chippiness forming between these two now. I love it. This is football. This is gamesmanship. This is getting back in the ball game. Yeah, you don't want to see a team in Pittsburgh just simply roll over here. You can see they've got a little bit of fight in them. They're still in this game. If they keep throwing bombs like they did the previous series, they can come back in this game. It looks like we did have a penalty here. Packer play is over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number two of Pittsburgh. That'll be a 10 yard foul. Automatic first down. That unsportsmanlike call Ten. on Pittsburgh. This is not an area where you can give up field position. The clock will start on the ready with mere seconds remaining here in the second half. Not at all. You're right. Not a smart play. I didn't see it. I just thought it was a little bit of jawing going back between the two teams, but they called it against Pittsburgh. A first and 10 ball at the 17. Drake having plenty of arm to take a shot here in the end zone. Receivers flanked to the left side. Drake back to pass. Now rolling right, rolling left that is, throwing across her body. Nobody there, it looked like the ball just got away. We do have a penalty. 10 yards, previous spot, replay it down. That is a holding on Omaha. There's time, you mentioned it, the strength of Drake's arm. She can throw it from anywhere around the field. She makes all the throws. They'll go back right now. They should go back right now, throw it in the end zone. You've got time for one more play. We do not have field goals in the LFL, so they've got to go to the end zone. They're going to need all of the arm strength of number 16 here. Who do you target? I would go after Ludenberg. She can catch the football. She's good in traffic. Just get to the end zone. You got to run to the end zone, catch the ball, a la the what Green Bay Packers do every year. Get in front of the ball, jump up, get it a time point, score a touchdown. That is one of the components of this roster. They really do not have a go-to receiver and certainly nobody that can stretch the field. That is Drake rolling right, running out of real estate. And Gina Campisi quietly having a great first half for Pittsburgh. You made a great point. Alex Drake tried to buy time in the pocket to throw in the end zone, but Omaha does not have the speed merchant receiver. Lundberg, Holbar, they can't get down the field. They need to get a player like Pittsburgh has with Jolie Evakai. That'll do it for us here through 20 minutes of football. The Omaha Heart dominating with an impressive 19 to six lead going into halftime. I, I mean, and most of the time, I think we just need to complete the pass. I mean, yeah, yeah. we got oh, this. We got this. In, just, yeah. You need to tell someone that you're in for them. Yes. Three times you guys had eight people in. It only looks yeah. bad and then it throws you guys off. So on your subs, communicate, say, you're out, I'm in. And then you're gonna make the fucking okay. play. The okay. problem with that is that I'm taking key players out because I'm trying to get that clock and I'm trying to yep. get that penalty on offense. So we need to communicate. Like I said, communicate is what's going to get us through this game. But we also don't know who he wants us to take out. Then that, well, if you need to ask it. them. If yeah, no, he's, like, he's not telling us. Like he's just saying, Lindsey, go from yeah. the end of the. Well, yeah, and then he and then he That's a total Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I mean, yeah. 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 the communication is off, and we need to keep our blocks, and we need to finish our routes. Like it's all something. It's easy shit. It's not something that we can't do going out there now. Offensive line, you do not get enough fucking credit. And you are doing fucking ass. That lady, you gotta trust the blocks. If you guys still not running where you need to run. Just yep. these ladies are trying to be patient. Go. Be patient. I know. Be patient. Like north and south. Don't let your judge. Like as soon as you see that opening, go. It's, it's, yeah, it's there, guys. Whoever's playing that too, you it's guys there. need to realize. Too, to if you see them start. stack in that middle, I know it. I see it, but I'm like shit. I don't know how I'm gonna tell them. Tap me. I know. Okay. Well, guess what? I'm gonna motion you. You're gonna flip over to that side, that stack, and you're gonna be my lead block for now on. What do you mean? We well, we're running that, that, we're getting that extra point. And I'm under center. Oh, oh. How they stacked in the middle? 
what we need to do is we need to get that lead blocker on that side. Okay. We need to recognize it as a whole. Read your defense. I need to read the defense. You need to read the defense. It's our first game, ladies. I thought you were talking about We gotta shake spot. off, okay. shake off our cobwebs. I've made some mistakes tonight. And it's over. It's in the past. We got a whole another half. We got a whole another half to play. All this shit is easy, easy I'm fixes. Four more if you need a breather, tell me. We'll go in a huddle. At least. Yeah, we got this. Four more ready. touchdowns. Four more hey, Ari. Touchdowns. Guess what? Way to get off the bench and protect your teammate. Fuck yeah. Nice yeah. fucking yeah. job. Proud. Hey, y'all good? Yeah. Just a couple things. <laughs> no, we didn't have to. She just jumped up and went. <laughs> right up to the girl, was like, Ari. Oh, well, I yelled at the ref too because she got tackled into the wall and then they kept letting the table. I thought, like, okay, the play's fucking done. Whistle the ball, don't let that fucking girl get beat up. I was so pissed. Uh, I'm, I'm like, you know, the play's done. Right? Right, hey, real quick. Oh, okay. we gotta get back to cooling down in the second half. Um, we're gonna get back to what we're good at right now, um, the 34 smash and all that stuff. Uh, our running, our running plays are running working very well. Um, when we do pass, we're gonna run the crossing routes because they're open every single time. But I need my wide receivers to be disciplined and get there quick and blocking the whole line. Okay. Um, also, when you go out for a sub, please tell that person to come out. Please we also them. need to communicate with you because we felt like. When you're like, all right, go in, we don't necessarily know who we're going with, yeah. so we'll just be so, like, if we don't know, asking yeah. you, because clearly we, some of us didn't yeah. know. Yeah. So just make sure, if you're going in an X and I put you an X and I didn't get a chance to tell the other person, obviously your X. The other person should not be an X, so tell them to come out. And if you don't know, ask him, wait, yeah. who do, where do you want me to go yes. in? Wait, I mean, I, I don't even think you know who all the players are by name. doesn't yeah. matter. Go up to and tap them. You know what she looks like. Hey, you, you're X. But, our number don't know but you know the X position, here. right? So if, if you're lining up next to another person at the exposition, just tell her to get out. Ask somebody. Who's Jamie? Or just say who's X. Just yell Jamie. Just who's X. All right. You can go. blocks away. That's it. Just one or two, like he said, one or two little things. We're fine. I, can you draw up how they're lined up? Because that's the issue. I don't know which person to pick the block. That's they're both what I was on saying. the same side. Like they have four people in, in the box. Yeah. In our in our room. There's no room. And then what? what you yeah. Yeah. We all move in there. Okay. It's like I go to block that person, but then there's two more like on the other side. Exactly. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got bullshit on your life. I mean, you. I wasn't making blocks. You. I said I wasn't missing on offense. You. 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 Understand it, Morgan. Pay attention to me now. Understand it. Remy, you're right behind me. Okay? Morgan, play action to Remy. Joey, step the ball. You're gone. Remy, you're still That's what you just scored. This is my issue. They're fucking trying to make sure we go to the other side. Like, I don't know who to block on. This is what they're doing. They got three people here, and the strong safety's in the box on the strong side. So, whatever we do, we can't run strong side because we're out man. They, they got a man, they match up to us. So we can't run outside, so we're going to do that oh, we're opposite. So Everybody take a deep breath. It's we're the strong go safety on that. Yeah, I know. We're not out of this. I can, I can, listen, we're, we're going to adjust to this. I just don't want this all here. Yeah, Everybody breathe. Block. We're going to go talk and we're going to come back. I know I can block. That's not the issue. All right, kid. Listen, I want listen, to listen defensively. Look. What they're doing, they're starting to cheat on. The only place they're beating us is inside. We're stopping everything else. So what they're doing is bumping these guys in. They're bringing them in and just running up the middle. That's what they're doing. So what we got to do is make sure we're coming inside 
bouncing, making this person bounce outside. That's where our help's at. We don't have no help in here. Bounce, make it bounce outside. We got to make it bounce outside. So in, try hard. Like where the center is, just come right there. Come hard. And no right matter there. what, hit the quarterback. Even after she throws the ball, they do it to me every fucking time. Uh, it'll wear her down. Just take up things. Do it. I mean, she runs it. Take her to the wall. That's what happens. We gotta be smart. Like we talked about as coaches, on Sunday or one, when you go under center and they're already. Back for the second half of LFL football night. It has been, as we said, a defensive battle with Omaha up 19 to six. It could be closer. I mentioned that at halftime, except for that fumble by Morgan Spencer, but it's a lot closer. Even though everybody watching this in the stands thinks Omaha should be blowing these guys out. A first and ten handoff. This will go to Nikki Bernhardt. Look at that speed. And Bernhardt chews up 18 yards. Wow, look at her get around the edge. She looks like she just robbed a bank, getting by everybody. What a run by Bernhardt to start off the second half. Omaha seems very content with keeping it on the ground as we talked about toward the tail end of the first half. There's no real outside threat in terms of wide receivers, so why not keep it on the ground? As an ex-coach, you have a quarterback that can throw, but you're right, they're getting big chunks of yardage on the ground. Why not keep doing it? That is Jamie Lundberg. Lundberg, a big factor in the first half. That was a seven-yard game. That front line, Sarah Robinson, Sarah Jane Thompson, and Danielle Schneider, they are blowing up this Pittsburgh front line. They don't need a passing game right now. That seven yard run sets up a second and three. As we move under nine minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Alex Drake not at all trying to look down the field or to the passing game. They are in great real estate here at the Pittsburgh 10 yard line. Inside handoff. That's the Reina Holober. Holober very quietly factoring like a big piece of that run game. I like the way Coach Dante Allen keeps her inside. She's not a flashy back. You keep her between the tackles. She's always going to get positive yards again. A nice chunk of yardage. Slowly, this offense has made its way down the field once again. And if they score here, already being up 19-6, there's an opportunity for this game to blow wide open. This game might be over if they take it in now. Somehow Pittsburgh got to come up big with a turnover or something. Drake looks to pass it this time. Buying time, a dangerous pass that went through the arms of two different Rebellion defenders. I think they should stay on the ground. Gina Campisi, that could have been a game-changing play. They're down two scores. If she can somehow bring that ball down for interception, it gives the ball back to Morgan Spencer with a chance to close with the one score. Big players make big plays and big games. Can't piece didn't come up with the ball. It looked like Misty Gonzalez also had an opportunity at the football. It will remain on the Omaha side, second and goal. This is a design keeper by Drake, the 5'9", 160-pound quarterback using that size. There's nothing against the quarterbacks for Omaha the past two years, but Drake eludes and has all kinds of confidence. She controls the huddle, and when she controls the huddle, her players become in control, and the whole team just looks so confident. That Drake run now setting up a third and goal. Alex Drake taking a lot of time on the sideline. Obviously, Omaha in no hurry here. Although the play clock is down to five seconds, they're not going to get this off. And there is the timeout from Omaha. That'll take us to a media timeout. Omaha still up 19 to 6. Just smashing it left. We're making a wall for her to come around. Okay? 
Back to LFL football night, and that was Omaha head coach Dante Allen obviously setting up what looks like another sweep play. Actually, I think that might be for the quarterback. I think he took something out of Keith Hack's playbook. They're all going to slant one way, take the defense that way, and the quarterback's going to come off that block and read, for, run for daylight wherever the hole is. A third and goal. Let's see what that, that is the case. That is Alex Drake sweeping right and getting into the end zone. You mentioned it earlier about her. If she can stay healthy, watch how strong she is. Good blocking outside, but she carries the defender into the end zone. If she stays healthy, she can become one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But the key is to stay healthy. Ironically, they're playing Pittsburgh. What NFL quarterback does Alex Drake remind you of? Cam Newton. And he gets nicked up all the time now. I, I, I lobbed that up to you, Bobby. I was referring to Ben Roethlisberger. Oh, I'm sorry about that. A, he a runs big, better than Ben Roethlisberger. Big Ben's okay, but he runs like Cam Newton. A big framed quarterback with a gun for an arm. I, I'm with you there. Running-wise, Ben's not the best runner. Drake can run. That is an extra point attempt. Speaking of Alex Drake, and I'm not sure if she crossed the goal line. The ball is loose. And you can hear the contact in the end zone. Wow, that's why we're in the booth, Mitch. We want no part of that contact. I think she crossed the line, though. There that is going to be a challenge, it looks like. That is Dante Allen coming clear across the field. I think he's pretty confident that she got in. I like his confidence. He's walking the midfield. That is indeed what Vince Hayes is saying. Let's see if she crosses here. We've got a good look right at the goal line. It's coming out right when she gets popped. Right there, it's coming out. I, I, you know what? I don't think she was in. I'm recalling what I just said. And we've got a good look at it here from up top. It looked like the ball is dislodged about right there by Remy Olenzak. Nonetheless, here's the call from Vince Hayes. They're going to stay with the call on the field. And Pittsburgh wasting no time getting back out. Joe DeBerry, Morgan Spencer, they have to go to their game breaker. A Fezica is the only one that can give them a quick score. They're down three scores right now. First and 10, ball at the 10, make that the 15 yard line. Morgan Spencer under center, down the field. And they listen to you, Bobby, down the field to Fezikai. And that should be a P.I. it looked like on Shalin Durham, who absolutely mugged Jolie Epizekai. Absolutely pass interference, but sometimes pass interference is a good call. She was going to get burnt by a Epizekai. It's going to be a touchdown. I think everybody knew that penalty was coming. Shalin Durham a bit outmatched by a lanky speed wide receiver. Great play by Jordan. There's no question. Ephezekai had her burnt for a touchdown from the six points of Pittsburgh. Kind of like, like that. It's better than hearing him losing two fight songs. Good play. A first and ten ball to midfield. Spencer under center. Handoff to Osselborn. And Osselborn breaking free and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. They are coming together at the end of the first half. Watch this play. Watch the kick out block. Watch the hole. Osselburn turns it on, gets by Dorham, shakes her down, scores a touchdown. Wow. Stop the presses. We have a penalty on the field. Yeah, that is a hold on Pittsburgh. Let's look at this. And that is a great call. To the left of the screen, you can see an obvious hold there. That looked to be Why Quaylen Pitts. Why did you call it in the first five goddamn times? Head coach Joe DeBerry not happy. You're full of shit. And not willing to fully express his feelings, apparently. You know what? I, he's got a good point because there was a previous call that went against them, and now they get they, they call right here to kill. Might have killed the game. That touchdown brought Pittsburgh right back in the game. Now they're back out again. 
You got to call that though. Quaylen Pitts was absolutely mugging that defender. Well, the bad part is it was unneeded. Hullabar was not going to make the tackle. Pitts did not have to hold him. Pittsburgh back on the ground with Hasselborn. A gain of five yards. Lindsey Burst on the stop. Pittsburgh is coming to life. The first quarter, we saw none of this. Passing, no running game. This is the Osborne that was advertised to us before the game. She can control a game. She was compared to Stevie Schnorr in Seattle, and she's showing it right now. Pittsburgh's only down 19 points. In the LF column, that is not a whole lot. Not a, at all. You have a Fezekai who scored any down if you throw the football. A second and five. Another handoff to Osselborn through the middle of that defense. Gaining five yards, that was Lindsey Burst on the tackle. I'll tell you what, we gave this Pittsburgh offensive line hell in the first half. Right now, they are blowing up the defensive line of Omaha. Wilmer, Kutzbach, and Trejo are doing it right now. Wow, very impressed. That is a great point. That front line is getting penetration where in the first half it looked like they were on the defensive a lot. Totally, it's a different team. I don't know if they had Snickers at halftime or something. This is a totally different Pittsburgh offense. Spencer looking over that defense. Under center, another handoff to Osselborn and that defense finally smelling it out. Sarah Jane Thompson coming up from the corner position. She had no help, but right there she did remind me of Stevie Storm. Taking that three yards, even though there was no hole. A key third and two, and you got to factor. Pittsburgh has got to come away with points on this drive. The scary part is twice on this drive, they had points. Storm on the pass interference call would have been a touchdown. And then the run by Osborne that would have been a six if not for the hole. Unbelievable offensive show right here, but you're right, no points so far. Is this a great spot for a potential play action pass to the end zone? I like the call, but with Morgan Spencer, she doesn't have that athletic ability like Drake does. On the pass run option, she can't score up the, up the field. Drake can. Spencer under center, rolling right, trying to buy time. An ill advised pass to Remy Olinson. That'll fall incomplete. You can't do that. She's a veteran quarterback. The ball's inside the 10 yard line. Sometimes she gets cabin fever. She doesn't want to do with the ball in the pocket right there. That should have been picked off. Luckily, they have the ball back inside the 10. She looked like a rookie on that play. I realize there's nearly 13 minutes remaining in this game, but if you're the Pittsburgh Rebellion, you have got to come away with points here. On this drive, 100% have to because you cut the lead to two scores, and you got a lot of time left to get one more turnover, you're back in it. A fourth and two. Ball about seven yard line, and that is a loose football. It looked like it was recovered by Jolie Epizeka. You can't have that. Wilbur did not get the ball back to Morgan Spencer. They fumbled the football on fourth down. A heads up play, recovered the ball back. I don't know how they did it, but they got a first down. You can advance the ball with a fumble. So that was a total legal play and just a break that Pittsburgh badly needed. Looked like Kenny Staver's old play right there. A forward fumble. They got the first down. First and goal ball at the four yard line. They're gonna go back to Osselborn. But look at that defense. Not only did they stop the momentum, they stripped the ball. And that'll be a loss of seven yards. I have to blame Osselborn a little bit. She did not attack the line of scrimmage. At worst, she has got no gain, but the ball is still inside the five. Now it's back at the 11. A second and goal. This Pittsburgh offense seems to be going backwards. They still have three shots at the end zone, and a game that they're down 19 points. Ball now at the 12-yard line. Spencer remains under center. Looking over that defense, dropping back, a deep drop by Spencer, throwing to the back of the end zone. That was a dangerous pass, but I kind of like it. You're throwing it up, you're allowing Epizakai to make an athletic play on it. I don't like the deep drop. It should have been a quicker throw. You throw a nine route, a fade route to the corner where it's one-on-one, -on -one, 
And you have a receiver, 6'1", 165, with great athletic ability. You throw it up in the corner, let her go get it. That one took way too long. It looked like a Hail Mary. That was about a 15, 20 step drop. I don't think I've ever seen that. And then it, it puts everybody in play. All the DBs become in play. If you do one, two, three step up, drop, throw in the end zone, then it's one on one. A third and goal for Spencer in this Pittsburgh offense. All about the 12 yard line. Spencer dancing to the left side and getting out of bounds. That was only a gain of about a yard. Sarah Jane Thompson on the stop. I don't like that call at all. You have a Pezekai and you try to roll your quarterback out. Who doesn't have great speed? Not good at all. They need points. That'll bring us to the end of the three quarters of play with Pittsburgh down 19. Back to the fourth quarter LFL football night. A raucous crowd here at the Ralston Arena watching their team up 19 over the Pittsburgh Rebellion. This is a completely different Omaha team. Look at the bench, they're even totally in this game. A key fourth and goal here. Ball at about the 11 yard line. Spencer trying to bite time in the pocket to the end zone. And just from the outstretched arms of Quaylen Pitts, Pitts is having all kinds of difficulty trying to get to the football. Morgan Spencer did not have the arm strength. She was actually throwing for a Bezakai in the left corner of the end zone. It came up short because he's falling back. Pitts tried to make the play, came across the field, but could not get it. So if you're the offensive coordinator of Omaha at this point, are you going to keep it on the ground or still take shots down the field? They're up three scores. They haven't really thrown the ball all night. I don't know why Dante M would change anything right now, especially in the fourth quarter, runs the clock. You could see the frustration with Morgan Spencer and more importantly with head coach Joe DeBerry. They brought in Morgan Spencer because they thought that she would be some kind of a savior at quarterback. And by all accounts, except for that one connection with the Fezekai before the end of the half, she's really struggled. Struggled because of no protection. Uh, he's not a bad quarterback. He needs some help. Though. Right there, going back to your point, though, about running the ball, Omaha almost made a fatal mistake. A Fezekai almost picked off an out route on the short side of the field. Yeah, you got to keep this on the ground, but they're going to go through the air again. That is Drake, a lot of time in the pocket. And showing that arm strength, complete to Raina Holober. Holober was covered. She had great time throwing across the field, put it right in her chest. A great throw by Drake, but I'm with you. I'm surprised at throwing the football. If you're the Pittsburgh Rebellion, you've got two opponents at this point the game clock and the Omaha Heart. If Omaha doesn't recognize that, they're going to allow Pittsburgh to get back into this game. They just can't afford a turnover, and they're throwing the football. That's what we expected on first down. A great open field tackle by Jessica Johnson. That was Nikki Bernhardt gaining two on the ground. They're going to be trying to strip the ball right now, enter the game down three scores. They have to create a turnover. The first player gets there, stops the runner. Everybody else come in and try to strip the football. The clock continues to run. Omaha could be en route to its first win. Actually, it's second win in two years. That is Alex Drake with a lot of time in the pocket, finding a receiver. That sailed incomplete, intended for Lindsey Howell. There is absolutely no one rushing the passer. She could have stayed back there for the entire fourth quarter. Literally, there was nobody rushing the passer. She could have stayed back till somebody was wide open. Yeah, I'm not sure what the strategy is there. It appears that Pittsburgh is almost dropping seven in the coverage. Which makes no sense. You have to attack the football, make a turnover, get to the quarterback. Down 19 points here in the fourth quarter. This Pittsburgh defense has got to make a play. That is not it. That looked like Olenzak really jumped offside. That is intercepted. Osselborn down the sideline. This will more than likely come back. It looked like Remy Olenzak here jumps at the bottom of the screen. What is Dante Allen thinking? This is the only possible way Pittsburgh can get back in the game as a turnover. And Osselborn almost takes it to the house. Just terrible play call. 
Illegal defense. On the defense. Five yards, previous spot. Remains third down. That is indeed the call. It'll move what was a third and four to a third and nine. But Omaha dodging a bullet there. That interception could have easily gone for six. Imagine your shotgun. That was an unbelievably bad call. You don't throw the football. You don't throw a your body. And, and they almost scored. Incredible. Ball at the 22. Now Omaha jumps. It was a third and four, check my previous call. Now a third and nine. Omaha not helping itself here with the penalties when they can easily put Pittsburgh away here. You know, I've been passing Alex Drake on the bad thing. What a great quarterback he is all night long. This series, she looks like a rookie. She looks rattled, throwing the interception. Now taking a penalty right now. Right now, she has to be a game manager and get rid of that time on the clock. Inside handoff, that's Shalin Durham. Durham broke a run like that for a score in the first half. This time gaining 12 yards. Great block by Sarah Robinson, center of Springfield right there. That's what you should give the football to Durham. She knows when it's the bell lap and how to get yardage. That'll set up a first and 10 inside the Pittsburgh 16 yard line. Omaha working on that clock. Up comfortably, 19 points here late in the fourth quarter. Another handoff, this time to Raina Holliber. Holliber, a very consistent six yards. This Omaha team, you know, I'm laughing about this, but they might not know how to run a clock out since they didn't win last year. Seriously, they're not used to having a lead in the fourth quarter. That is something that you have to get used to. Although I don't think they're going to be complaining about that. That's something that they want to get used to. They played a great game, but right now I can see Clinton Jones confusion back there. Yeah, the quarterback's got to take control, watch the clock run down, snap it with one second left on the, on the game clock, and, and keep moving. And here's Drake, still throwing the ball, and now completing Raina Holliber. That is a gutsy call. Enough for eight yards, and now Omaha is first and goal inside the two-yard line. Just a swing pass, a great throw, a great route, a great catch, and a great run. But it, again, we're both surprised at the play selection. A first and goal at the two-yard line. Omaha obviously in no hurry to get this playoff. You score here, this game is officially done. This game's done, but I've got to kind of hand it to Dante Allen. He is definitely not conservative here in the fourth quarter. Now, a second ago, you were criticizing him. Now you're handing it to him. Hey, if they go in for a touchdown, I'm, I'm switching my allegiance. Alex Drake getting down to about the half-yard line. And that is the Pittsburgh bench yelling for a holding call. On the replay, you'll see a little bit of grabbing there, but not much to play at the rest right there. He did not call it. That is Coach DeBerry, who's had enough of this tonight. And he's getting a lesson here in LFL football. He's getting a big lesson. I can tell. I like his attitude. He is not happy getting beat like this and Omaha racking up the school like this in the fourth quarter. Throwing hay right now. His debut right now is not a happy one. Meanwhile, Alex Drake has really gotten into a comfort zone in this offense. And with her size, she does not mind running the ball. Not at all. I think she is easily become a big fan favorite here in Omaha. This team did not win last year. She has his fans, his fans all over right now. Great play by Alex Drake. And you know, a lot of people asked her in the offseason. She had an opportunity to potentially sign with Chicago, the Legends Cup champion, and she chose Omaha. They asked her why Omaha. She said, I wanted a challenge. I did not want an easy ride. Easy ride, and she can become a superstar quarterback here, and she can create this franchise where Chicago has already been created. That's Raina Holliber. 
Hollaburn had such an impact on the first half and is picking up where she left off. They have a lot of solid players. Hollaburn, you're right. She has had an unbelievable game. Look at her. A little mixed up, a little limp, but she don't care right now. This Omaha Hart team has a lot of heart. They play great football right now. That was a nine-play, 39-yard drive. And more importantly for Omaha, it chewed up five minutes and 34 seconds of the clock. You and I didn't think it was going to happen that way. We thought we'd be on the ground, but they threw the ball a lot on that drive, but they scored. i got to hand it to them. Now if you're Pittsburgh, you've got to build some momentum going into your next game by finishing strong here. You're not going to win this game. Just leave some good game film out there. Absolutely. And they've done that in the second half. They're, they played a lot better than they did in the first half. The running game, the passing game, they look sharp at times. They look like they have potential. You're right. It would be great to close this game out with a score if they can do it. Osselborn just running out of gas here late in the fourth quarter. That was Lindsey Burse and Danielle Snyder combining on the tackle. I'm really impressed with this defense. There's been a lot of looks that Coach Good has put in there. It's not easy for Morgan Spencer to read these defenses. Kale Good has put a nice team in here. Kale Good returning. He was the defensive coordinator in 2012 when Omaha was one of the better defenses in the game. And you could see the immediate impact he's had on this roster. They're going to be a fun team to watch. This is Morgan Spencer back to pass, just lofting it over the middle. And that's intercepted. That was intercepted by Jamie Lundberg. I don't like the way they have her reversing out like that. She's throwing off her back foot, falling backwards, nothing on the plate. Just throwing it up, and that's going to get picked off probably nine out of ten times. Morgan Spencer is just frustrated tonight. She's saying she can't see the whole field because she's running for her life. Why well, blame the offensive team? They don't have to keep her in the pocket, put a, put a pocket around. They're not reverse around like that, but she's throwing, falling back. This is a handoff to Carla Kosak. Kosak, a free agent pickup from the Chicago Bliss, gaining five yards. Watch out for Kozak. She's a great at Hills, great player. Didn't see any action from Chicago, but she has a lot of talent. Watch out for her this year. Omaha Hart, now this is pretty much academic, getting some of the bench players in. Although Alex Drake remains in at quarterback. If you're wondering, Lindsey Howell is the backup. A bunch set from Omaha. And they mishandled that snap. Drake with that size, 5'9", 160, just falling forward for two yards. She is such, such a competitor. I like her, and I compare her a lot to Tom Brady. She will finish a game out. She doesn't want to be pulled out and waved to the crowd. She wants to take every snap till this game ends. That last play should get us down to the two-minute warning. Omaha sitting very comfortably on top of Pittsburgh, 32 to six. And for Pittsburgh, simply time to regroup. Back for the final two minutes of action here in Omaha, Nebraska. And that is the game MVP, Alex Drake. Wow, you gotta love that. Drinking a beer, two minutes left in the game. This is confidence. This is what Omaha needs. Talk is trash when the game's not even over. Pittsburgh cannot like this. Hey, if you're an Omaha fan, this is your Super Bowl. You have not had a win here in quite some time. In fact, you've lost by a margin of 64 points or more. You gotta take this. Listen to her team saying that's my QT. That is Omaha's QT. You're right, I think she just crossed over to being an Omaha Hart because prior to this game, she was branded as a New England Liberty free agent quarterback coming in here, and let's see if she just fits in. Following this game, I think she's taken on the identity of the Omaha quarterback. You're right, we knew she had the talent. She knew she was in New England, but it wasn't like this. She has a team that's revolving around her, 
and they, she is making everybody around her play better. A third and three, Alex Drake back to pass. Look at the pressure. That is Jessica Johnson, and where has that been all day? Jessica Johnson had some wheels from the edge. That's right. This Pittsburgh team, I'm telling you, they're going to fall out their sleeping on some people this year. Because they're going to say, see this sport, like, they're no good. They can't even play with Omaha. But they have some talent players. There are definitely some athletes on that side of the football. They just need to be coached up. They need to be on the field. And I think you mentioned right there, I get on the field with a lot of this. This is his first game, Joe Perry. He learned about the LFL tonight. He learned about officiating the opposition. How you have to be ready. His team wasn't properly prepared. I guarantee they're going to come out ready next game. A fourth and ten for Omaha. Obviously, no punting situation here. And Drake just throwing it away. Not sure it even matters. This is obviously an academic part of the game. But why did Drake hurt? That's what I was going to say. They came off the edge unblocked. You have a blitzing player coming one on one. Even after she throw it away, she went after. She gets hit low, hurts the knee. You can't have that happen. I have four out the game right now. Pittsburgh will get the ball back and probably one more drive. Morgan Spencer, it looks like, has been pulled from this ball game. And it appears that Sonia Osselborn is our new quarterback. That's interesting. I don't know if it's a move or, or she might be hurt. I don't know. It's, it's not good for her confidence, I'll tell you that. Osselborn had some looks at quarterback in the offseason. So she is familiar with the position. This is an interesting set here. And this handles the ball. An ill-advised pitch out. This is starting to look like the Bad News Bears offensively. Exactly. I'm going to tell you what, if Osborne was going to make her presence known as a quarterback, it's not like that. That was very sloppy. Morgan Spencer, maybe he's going to give her some snaps, but I, I would think that Morgan Spencer is your quarterback. Yeah, I think you need her in here at this point. If this, she needs every rep she can get under center. Absolutely. Osborne is obviously not going to be your answer at quarterback. We've got another penalty. Head referee Vince Hayes really earning that paycheck. Substitution wow, that yellow flag flying a lot Eight tonight. players, Pittsburgh, five yards, second down. They've got too many women on the field on the Pittsburgh side. That'll back them up another five yards with just under a minute remaining in this game. I'm really confused why Morgan Spence was not in the game. I mean, she is definitely the quarterback, and for some reason, if she's pulled for any, some reason about how she played, this is gonna totally hurt her confidence. Yeah, Osselborn's obviously not your quarterback in the future. You've gotta give Morgan Spencer every rep you can. A second and 18 now. Osselborn back to pass, looking down the field. And I'm not sure that was even intended for that receiver as Jolie Epizokai was running down the sideline. I, I got to give credit to Alzeborn. It was on the money. <laughs> that ball should have been caught. Maybe we were wrong about her, but I, I, you're right. It was thrown like a Hail Mary, and somehow the receiver got under it. That looked like Rachel Manzo was trying to get under that football. Pittsburgh not rolling over, still taking some shots down the field. This time of the game, it's actually better than practice, for real. This is game time. Even though there's only a few seconds left, it's given a lot of experience to a lot of players in game situations. Absolutely, especially as an expansion franchise. To see the live action here, this is going to aid them as the season goes on. Another ill-advised pass by Osselborn, deflected by that Omaha defense. Sarah Robinson almost had a present there. She could have walked in with a pick six. She just didn't expect it, and it came right to her. This looks to be a fourth down play and should be the final play of the game. We'll see if Osselborn has the arm to get it down the field. Osselborn back in the shotgun, shot over her head into the hay. And that'll do it, an ugly way to end this game. And getting into it in the end zone with a couple Omaha Heart players. As our clock goes to zero, that'll do it for us here in Omaha. What are your thoughts? My thoughts right there. If you think Osborne's your quarterback, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. My final thought is Omaha looked great. Totally different team than last year.
I love the fact that Omaha established a run game and allowed their quarterback, Alex Drake, to become comfortable based on that run game to sling it down the field a few times. Really impressed with the run game. Really impressed about Dante out and Coach Coach Good. They did a heck of a job with this team. Completely different team. They changed the MO. They changed the identity. You felt that energy throughout the day in this building. And boy, did this team respond. The Omaha Heart in a convincing way. Winning this one 32 to six. Behind the legs of Nikki Bernhardt and the will of Alex Drake. Omaha wins big and moves to 1-0. For Bobby Huco, Brenna Black, this is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.